Hi, in this video we're going to look at some county examples. Uh, we're going to see a concept called distinguishable permutations and uh, it's, a, it's a concept that will show up in some problems. And so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, in this example we got a bag of four marbles, a red marble with a one painted on it, a red marble with a two painted on it, and then a green marble with a one painted on it, and a green marble with a two painted on it. The idea here is I want each marble to be distinguishable from, each, from, from other marbles. So if you see a marble, if I see a red marble, then uh, you know, one of them's got a one painted on it, one of them's got a two painted on it. Uh, I, I can see that they're different. Okay, and the question would be well, to determine the number of ways to arrange the marbles in a row. Well, I, I'm going to break this down into a fundamental counting principle uh, uh, question. I've got four choices for the first marble and three choices for the second marble and so forth. Fundamental counting principle would say that there are four factorial or 24 ways to arrange the marbles in a row. And since 24 is a relatively small number, I've listed out all 24 possibilities uh, on the slide there. Uh, you can pause the video if you like and check that I've exhausted all the possibilities, but that's all of them. They're all different, and, and that accounts for all of them. So now let me change the problem a little bit. Instead of the two red marbles having, uh, be, uh, um, um, you know, one of them having a one on it and one having a two on it, let's say that two red marbles were identical looking red marbles. I'm going to capture that in the video and the slides here by taking the subscripts off of the R's, and so when I do that, I just have, uh, I have this, this, the 24 reduced to, uh, to these arrangements. But these, are not, uh, these are, are not all different arrangements. For instance, if you look at the two uh, arrangements that I have arrows next to, uh, those, look, I, those look exactly the same. So those are, those are non-distinguishable from one another. And, and so the, uh, the answer is no longer going to be 24. So I'm going to change the problem up a little bit instead of saying determine the ways to arrange the marbles in a row. Let's look at the let's let's determine the number of distinguishable permutations of the four marbles. When I say permutations, you can think of uh, permutations and arrangements as being uh, syn synonyms of one another. So uh, what are the distinguishable uh, uh, arrangements or permutations? The ones that I have highlighted, there are not highlighted, but arrows next to, those are not distinguishable. You can't tell one of those from, from another, so I don't want to count that twice. I'd only count that once. Likewise, I'll put arrows next to these two arrangements, or those two permutations. They look identical. They're, they're exactly the same permutation. I don't want to count that uh, twice. I'll now count that once. And I'm just going to go through and, 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 and highlight, the, in each case, the two that, were look at that, that are identical and, and count them as one. And so, uh, again, you can slow the video down if you like, but... Um, and, and make sure that you agree. But again, each one, like for instance, these two that I have arrows next to, those two arrangements or those two permutations, they look identical to one another. Now that I don't know the difference between uh, the red marbles, I can't see the difference between the red marbles. Those are identical uh, permutations. Those are, are uh, non-distinguishable permutations. And, and so finally, I get that my answer is going to be, I just count them here, my answer is going to be 12. And now where did I get the 12 from? Well, I took four factorial, which the 24 uh, that I started with, and I separated them into groups of, uh, where there were two, uh, two permutations in each group, and each of those two permutations were, uh, um, were non-distinguishable. So then how many, so how many groups did I end up with? Well, I took 24 permutations, set them up, you know, separated them into groups of two, so I'd have 24 over 2, or 12, uh, of the groups, and so these would be uh, these would be the distinguishable arrangements now, uh, accounting for the fact that the red marbles were identical looking. Now the two in the denominator happens; it, it's a two, but it, but and we're going to see this later in the video. That it's really a two factorial. So uh, look what I did there. I switched the slide on you. I went from a two in the denominator to a two factorial in the denominator. Uh, two factorial is equal to two, and so it's kind of hard to see the difference uh, in the denominator why I used a two or, or versus a two factorial. But we'll we'll see that in in, uh, in a later slide. Okay, so now I'm going to change the problem up a little bit more, and I'm going to say, well, let's, let's take the numbers off of the green marbles now. Let's say that the two green marbles are identical looking. And so um, at this point then, um, 
you know, I'm, I'm going to uh, do the same thing. I, I went too quick there. Let me back up. I, I'm going to I'm going to capture the fact that the green marbles are identical looking by removing the subscripts off of the G's, and so uh, that's what I get. And clearly, uh, I don't. Uh, you know, it's the same situation as before. If I look at those first two. Uh, arrangements or permutations, those now are non-distinguishable now that I can't tell the difference between the green marbles. Those, those look the same. So again, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to count that as, as two different arrangements. My answer is no longer going to be a 12. Uh, so I want to count that as one arrangement. Uh, these two, uh, now that I've removed the, the, the subscripts off of the green or took the, you know, now that the greens are identical looking, then those two arrangements that I have arrows next to are the same. Uh, these two are the same and so forth. Uh, so finally you'll see, well, uh, my answer then is that I'm going to end up with, uh, these are the, I have six arrangements now, six distinguishable permutations of the, of the marbles. Where did the six come from? Well, I started with the 12. The 12 were the number of distinguishable permutations based on uh, having the red marbles that were identical looking. And then I separated those when I said, well, let's assume the green marbles are identical looking. Then I separated the 12 into groups of, of size two. And eat, in, in each of the groups of size two, each one of those two permutations were non-distinguishable. And so how many groups did you have? Well, you have 12 divided by two, which is six. Let's break that down a little bit more. And the numerator of the 12 came from being 24 divided by two from an earlier, you know, earlier slide. And then I rewrite that as a 24 divided by uh, a two times two. And the 24 came from being the four factorial to in, in the, uh, you know, when I was able to, um, so when I was able to distinguish every marble from itself, I had four factorial or 24 um, arrangements. And so that's where the numerator came from. And I, I mentioned before the, the denominator, the twos in the denominator are really two factorials. And so uh, I'm thinking of the first two factorial as being a two factorial because there were two red marbles and the second factorial as being two factorial because there were two green marbles. Uh, one observation that I also want to make here is that this is exactly the expression that defines a four choose two, a combination of four objects chosen two at a time. And in fact, I'll put, I'll put this important fact in bold here. When you only have two choices for each selection, for instance, in this case, each selection was either a red marble or a green marble. So there are only two choices for each selection then the number of, uh, uh, of distinguishable permutations is, is equivalent to just uh, calculating the number of, cal uh, number of combinations. So it's just a, a combination calculation. Okay, let's look at another example like this uh, that, uh, you, that, that has, has more than, <laughs> you know, uh, a little bit more complicated because there are more objects. So let's say that you have a library bookshelf that contains five identical looking math books and four identical looking history books. And we want to determine the number of distinguishable permutations of the nine books on the bookshelf. I hope you're able to extrapolate from what we did before what the answer is going to be. There's nine total books. So in the numerator, you're going to have a nine factorial. Five of them were identical looking uh, of one type. So um, in the denominator, I'm going to have a five factorial and times uh, a four factorial because there were another four identical uh, uh, objects of another type. And so that's what the, the, the formula is going to be for a uh, number of distinguishable permutations. Again, they're only one of two types. Each, um, e each selection, when I think of selecting one of the books to put on the bookshelf, each selection is one of two types. And so this is nothing more than a, a combination calculation of a nine choose five. Now you can also think of that as a nine choose four. There's some symmetry there. Nine choose five and a nine choose four are going to be the same uh, same value. And in this, you can do the calculation, you'll see that this is going to be 126. Let's look at the logic a little bit closer. The logic is, is the same as what we did in the, in the little simpler case uh, in example one. And that is that if all nine books were, were different, if all the books looked different, then there would be nine factorial arrangements of the book on the bookshelf. Uh, 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 any, any, you know, w w once I had the books on the bookshelf, uh, any time I, uh, I swapped books around, you would be able to tell the difference because the nine books were all different. Uh, you know, the books were all different. So I I'm going to start with nine factorial as being the number of uh, arrangements or permutations of the books on the bookshelf. If I was able to tell all the books 
um, uh, you know, apart from one another. So now let's focus on a given arrangement of the set of books on the bookshelf. So let's look at the uh, uh, my diagram at the bottom. Then I'm assuming that the map books are placed in 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 slots uh, three, four, six, eight, and nine. And and uh, I'm assuming that the map books are all different. So I have. Uh, you know, map book, you know, the first map book in the third slot, and there's another different map book in the fourth slot. And now look, watch what I do with those first two map books that in slots three and four. If I swapped them around, would you be able to tell the difference uh, between those two arrangements, those two permutations? Of course you would be able to if they were the same, of course you would be able to if they were different math books, but now let's, uh, so if I shuffled them around, there were different map books, you could t tell the difference. But now let's assume that the map books are identical looking. And now you wouldn't be able to tell if I shuffled them around. You wouldn't be able to tell. And how many ways are there for me to shuffle around those in those, in those five slots? Well, there were, there were five factorial ways of me shuffling those, five, those map books around in those five slots. Um, and so there's, uh, uh, again, five factorial permutations. If the math books were all identical looking, five factorial of those permutations are going to be non-distinguishable. And so I'm going to separate the nine factorial arrangements that I had into groups where the size of each group is five factorial because each one of those arrangements in that five factorial, would, I wouldn't be able to distinguish, uh, distinguish, distinguish one from the other. I couldn't tell the difference. And so how many such groups do you have? Well, you would have nine factorial divided by five factorial. That comes out to be uh, 3,024. Uh, arrangements, distinguishable arrangements or permutations, distinguishable permutations of the books on the shelf accounting for the identical looking math books. Now let's, now let's turn our attention to the, to the history books. Now, if the history books were all different, then uh, I've got the history books, I've got the slots that the history books are in, and you can see that, uh, you know, if the history books are different, I'm going to put a subscript with, with, the, with, the, with the H's, and watch what I do with the history books, the, the, the third and the fourth history book. If I swapped them around, would you be able to tell that I swapped them around? Of course you would be able to if they were different history books. But if they were the same history book, you wouldn't be able, if they looked exactly, the books looked exactly the same, you wouldn't be able to tell that I swapped those around. So if the history books are identical, there's going to be four factorial permutations of those, uh, of those 3,024. There'll be four factorial permutations where I swapped the history books around and you weren't able to tell uh, because I... Uh, 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 because again, the history books looked identical. So four factorial uh, permutations will be non-distinguishable. Non so I'm gonna take the 3,024 distinguishable arrangements that I had accounting for the red books, uh, I'm sorry, accounting for the math books looking identical. And now I'm going to uh, group, I'm gonna separate the 3,024 permutations into groups of size four factorial where every permutation in that group of size four factorial looked exactly the same. So I don't wanna count each one of them different. I wanna count those as, as just one permutation. So how many groups would you, would, would you have? Well, would you, you would have the 3,024 divided by four factorial. Uh, and, and reducing that, that, that ends up being uh, 126. So I would end up with 126 distinguishable permutations of the books on the bookshelf, accounting for the fact that uh, both the math books now are identical looking and the history books are identical looking. And you could see the 126, you know, came from uh, the 3,024 divided by 4 factorial, but the 3,024 came from 9 factorial divided by 5 factorial. And unwinding everything, you can see why the answer is, is what it is. 9 factorial divided by 5 factorial um, in the denominator of product 5 factorial and 4 factorial. Finally, let's look at one last uh, example. I'm going to kind of go through this quickly and, and uh, hope, hope that you can kind of see the, the way to uh, extrapolate the answer from what we've already done. Let's say that uh, instead of just uh, uh, math and, and history books, we throw in three identical looking chemistry books. So now we have a total of 12 books on the shelf. 
And the question was, well, what's the number of distinguishable permutations of the 12 books on the shelf? So the same logic that we just applied, I hope that you can see now using the same logic that we just applied, the answer would be 12 factor, a ratio in the numerator 12 factorial, that's how many total books we have, and then the denominator, a product of 5 factorial, 4 factorial, and 3 factorial, because 5 of the books were identical of one type, 4 were identical of a, of a of different type, and then 3 were identical of uh, yet a, a third type. And so if you go through the calculation here, you'll get 27,720 would be the, the number of arrangements, uh, distinguishable arrangements or distinguishable permutations of those 12 books on the bookshelf. Okay, uh, this example three will actually show up again in the uh, next example I do. Uh, so I hope that you, uh, if you don't understand that, kind of go back through the video and try to uh, make sure you understand it. Again, this, this idea shows up in the, uh, in, in the uh, example in the next video. All right, uh, I'll see you in the next video.